guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review today's game up on the tabletop is called horizons and it is an area control 4x game in horizons you're basically going to be playing as one of many different races and you're going to be attempting to vie for control of the galaxy by doing so you're going to be placing down colonies of metal collectors and energy collectors and if you can place down all of your colonies you're going to end the game the player who has the most control is going to win there's some unique little twists to it there's actions you can take and then there's allies that will be included in the game that you can pick up which will give you a vastly a uh, bonus to each of your actions that you're going to be playing throughout the game if you go ahead and utilize them it'll give you powers but of course you have quests in which you're going to be getting victory points as well if you can gain the most control of each of the different areas as well as the most knowledge and bonus victory points you can get if you have the most you'll win the game horizons let's go ahead and show you down below what you get and everything included in the game as well as some interesting things and then my review so here we have the game horizons and we're showing you with three players when you play with two, scoring is a little different, but it plays very similarly. In this game, you're going to be getting a character board, and you're also going to be getting all of these tokens. You have the energy, metal, and colonies, and you're just going to simply place them on the board in the areas indicated. You're also going to start with two metal, two energy, and one of these knowledge points, and two cards. These are special, like, little missions that you can attempt to gain uh, throughout the game. At the end of the game, if you've done them, you're going to gain bonus points. You can get five of these uh, total throughout the game, and if you get more, you can go ahead and discard them and keep the ones that you want the most. You're also going to start with an ally, and this guy is going to give you some special ability, and of course a card to show you all the different symbols in the game and how they function. On your board are all the different planets and whether you're adapted to them or not, and you're also going to have actions. Now, in this game we're playing just the basic game, and which is going to show you the main actions, but uh, you can go ahead and turn your board over and it will give you unique actions, such as this one has Parasite and Leech, that do something a little different, changing the game up in itself. These are the allies you can go ahead and pick throughout the game, depending on the actions you choose. And this is the ones that you're going to be starting with, so you won't need to see these anymore. But they are all going to be based on a specific action that you take. When you take those actions, you'll be able to utilize these cards. You can flip it over the first time, and the second time it will go away and put, be put back onto the bottom of the deck. Uh, sometimes you want to keep these guys, and sometimes using them is going to score you a lot of points. Everybody's also going to start with their own sun. So in a three-player game, you're going to get three suns, and you're going to go ahead and set them down on the board. And uh, they're also going to put all the planets in here into this bag. Everybody's then going to draw a planet and choose whatever side they want and place it on their solar system or their sun in any way they want. Once they do that, then they're going to go ahead and take one of these control-like tokens and place it on the space. So, for instance, this one here, he drew this one. He chose this side, so he's actually going to activate this one, which allows him to build on these points here for all of the colored planets of this type. So pink is currently his. He, he can occupy this space this one is for orange uh, green has orange and uh, the white player has blue over here the planets go into this bag here and they're shuffled up and then everybody's ready to begin the game the rest of the stuff is pushed aside you've got the extra mission cards here and this is a stack of the different tokens you'll be using which are basically resources and knowledge that will allow you to build certain things let's go ahead and talk about the actions and the first one here is explore it says you can take two actions and you can mix and match in any way you choose so you can choose to explore which allows you to draw one of these planets and then you can go ahead and choose a side and then place it down on your board making sure you follow the restrictions which is pretty simple it just shows you the little arrows and whatnot but you push you put it on your sun so that would be how we would place it uh, additionally after you do that then you can go ahead and gain one of these purple knowledge tokens which give you points at the end of the game the other option is adapt. You can activate a planet by simply taking one of these and placing it down on your board somewhere, which allows you to build onto those planets. And this is the cost and what you can build and the cost and being able to build a colony. So if I wanted to adapt, maybe I want to adapt to this blue area over here, I could place that there and then I'd be able to take an ally as well. And taking an ally is I can select any of the allies here on the board. And um, I think you also flip one down and draw this a second one. But the idea is you take one, you place it next to you, which means the next time you take an action that has that symbol. So for instance, the build action, you could choose to do this. So we'll talk about the build action next because that one's pretty simple. Activate a planet, allowing you to build on them and then simply taking an ally. So I took this one to show you build. Building's pretty simple as well. You can build an energy collector, a metal collector, or you can go ahead and build a colony. These are the three listed down here and you only have a certain allotment that you can build. And if you build all of these in the game, it ends instantly upon that last build. 
Uh, so he currently can go ahead and build on, we'll remove this blue one here. We can go ahead and build on purple here. And if he wants to build an energy collector, it'll cost him one energy and one metal. And you put it down there and then you can take this and place it in one of the three areas on the board here. And that is the cost. Now you cannot build anything but the energy. If this one had a symbol that was like this, you could build both. And if it had this symbol, you could only build metal. Every single planet can build colonies though, and they all have different costs. After you went ahead and built there, you can also choose before or after to use an ally that has that symbol and it works for all of these actions and this one says that you can pay one resource of either type to build one of these as well that's pretty useful right so if i wanted to build an extra thing i could flip this over and then i'd be allowed to build on that location there P pretty cool when you're using these cards like that um, now that being said, if you flip it over once then you'll be able to activate it one more time and you can remove it, uh, from the game after you activate it twice, but sometimes you might want to keep them because you're going to have special missions. This guy has missions. He has to build a colony or he has to build one of those two on a specific type of planet. He can get three points for doing so. And this one says he can build these, one of the, uh, all three of these on a planet and that will score him four points as well. And these are points at the end of the game for victory conditions. That's a good thing to have. Harvesting. Harvesting work is pretty simple. If you choose this action, you'll gain one of these little tokens, energy, for each energy building you have on the board here. And you can also uh, gain one medal for every medal, uh, one of these guys you have on the board. So from this pool here. Uh, the next thing is Conspire. That will let you draw two mission cards. Or if you don't want to do that, you can draw one mission card and an ally. Those are the five basic actions. And like I said, you'll be utilizing these cards here, allies, to increase your options for being able to do specific things. This one over here lets you gain a knowledge. Oh, sorry, pay a knowledge to gain uh, this symbol here. And if you don't know what that symbol is, you can go ahead and look and it'll show you, oh, that symbol is a mission. So you'll be able to, build, uh, to gain four missions for doing that. This one is gaining two allies or gaining five metal, gaining two missions, so on and so forth. So it gives you some different options. And of course, it's going to be a total of six different planets around the board here because this is all you can build. But once somebody builds these guys here for, for the cost down below on the planets, that will signify the end of the game. That's pretty much how the game works. And players are just going to go around on their turn, choosing two actions, flipping the allies if they have them, and building and putting out planets as well as activating them to allow them to build on those planets. At the end of the game, control is going to give you additional points as well as these and as well as these. And control works like this if you're the only one on a system you're going to get six points and you need to take one of these six that count towards your score if for instance let's say you got like that that is the uh, that is a tie in which case each player would get three points uh, now let's go ahead and talk about colonies if this was like this uh, you're going to have this one is worth two control points and these are each, each worth one so in this case this player is going to get six points, and these guys are tied for second place, so they're each going to get one point. Control is based on not the planets, but the, column, the, the sun itself, so everything around here. So you're going to add up all of them, and that is how you're going to score. Additionally, if it, we were tied for, uh, if both players were tied for, if, or if it was like this, it would be six and three points. But you're going to do that for each of the sun areas, scoring additional victory points throughout the entire game, adding up all your points at the end to see who wins the game horizons. Fair Fairly simple as to how it works, but some unique little aspects, including the mission cards and, of course, being able to flip over these boards and do different actions. Let's go ahead and show you one board really quick before we end it here. And I'll tell you some additional things like Parasite. You can build a colony on an occupied planet and then you can gain a knowledge. Pretty interesting. Leech allows you to use knowledge to build certain things on occupied planets. And you can also gain money or sorry, energy for each of your collectors. And so this gives you an additional ability in including the normal uh the normal harvesting action. Pretty interesting how they work, and they're all different in their own ways. But that's the basic idea of the game. Once you get all of your little colonies down on the board in some way, shape, or form, the game's gonna end immediately, and you tally up your points and see who wins the game horizons. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so any caveats? And uh, I got a little bit. First of all, this is a 4X game, but it's kind of like a micro or a light 4X game because it's missing combat and it's also missing a tech tree. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is not included in this. However, flipping over your board will give you slight little advantages in how you want to play the game and change the way the game is played just a little bit, which is just enough. This game is great in my opinion. Straight up, I really, really enjoyed it. It's something that I can teach very quickly and something that I can get people into the larger 4X games with. 
but it also has that idea of area control and placing down. You're not necessarily beating somebody over the head in this game, but based on your choices compared to theirs, you can make some great choices or some really bad ones, and it can be based on decisions made previously on your account or on your opponent's account. So it has that back and forth feel. The more players in this game, the more fun in my opinion. The game gets a little bit bigger because you include more planets, and two players is also interesting as well because it changes the way the scoring works. It's going to be based on the planets as opposed to be being, being based on the sun but for the most part it feels very similar they can play from two to five there's no specific player count i'd say works best with this game i always say i like playing with three or more players for the most part but when i played two players with this game i enjoyed it quite profusely I like the fact that you start off with your own unique ally or your own ally and then there's a bunch of unique cards that you can go ahead and pick through when you're done using them they go to the bottom so you're always going to be seeing the different ones but every game is going to have different allies to be able to utilize and you're also going to decide how you want to pick them maybe based on the next action you're taking or maybe because they're better than a specific another ally on the board and sometimes you'll pick a weaker ally because you'll know you'll be utilizing it sometimes you'll be keeping an ally you want to use though because there are specific missions that are going to give you points at the end of the game as well maybe you want to build three colonies on a planet and if you do you're going to gain two points uh holding three different types of allies all sorts of things and there's quite a lot of these and they range from anywhere from one to like four or five points and points in this game are sparse so six points for holding an entire area is very very powerful and people are going to try and do their best to stop you from doing that uh, overall the artwork is very very nice very very good I like all the component quality and I had a ton of fun playing this game if you're a fan of lighter 4x games this is what I would definitely suggest picking up they did a smashing job of it and as always I like most of the stuff they do uh, involving games this one is no exception to that rule definitely check out horizons if it's for you the only people i try and try and give a little bit of a negative in some way to explain maybe what you wouldn't like about this game this is definitely on the more meatier side so if you're used to playing take that card games this is a little bit thicker than that uh, probably a little bit more than a little bit thicker than that but it's definitely not something that's like a war game or a big fat 4x game this is one that pretty much anybody above 12 or 13 is going to be able to pick up pretty quickly but uh, like i said easy to learn difficult to master so if you're newer to it you're playing with an experienced player hopefully they're letting you understand how the game functions the first time before going about trying to smush you because i can easily see somebody being very good at this game and two players maybe playing with them that are learning and getting creamed but that works for most forex games anyway right anyway guys go ahead and check down below in the link if you'd like to go ahead and take a look at horizons and maybe even pick it up for yourselves i definitely recommend this game all right over and out horizons later